Well, my backup is here. Terrence, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's nice to meet everyone. I'm Terrence Blake. <laughs> Terrence is a marketing specialist. He is the head of Google Marketing. And yeah. when our initial um, person backed out, I scrambled yesterday and I said, Terrence, <laughs> can you please come on and just talk to us about marketing yourself? communicating and developing relationships and the importance of it and what's the best way to do it. And I say it because, I guess Braxton, I say it because I know when I started in this whole real estate investing thing, I'm not the one to step into a room or these meetups and command the room. It's not like I walk in and say, Tanya, like Norm. It's never been like that. But then when I, I noticed that nobody is like that everybody sort of keeps to themselves or they stand against the wall and then there's there's always one person who commands the room and they always late so you don't find out about it until the end <laughs> and that they're the ones right and so i wanted terrence to come on he does my social media he, he has helped me tremendously with my social because i'm not a social media person mm -hmm. i don't really care for it it's so loud it's noisy that everybody's got an opinion and I don't care and everybody's showing their food and everything else. I don't like that. And so I, but I do understand the importance of it yes. in marketing yourself in your business. So I just said, let me hire somebody who enjoys doing it. So Terrence handles my marketing, my uh, social media marketing. However, <laughs> he does so much more. So I wanted him to come on, ask him a few questions and tell us, you know, about building relationships and about marketing and, and about doing this social thing. So Terrence, the floor is all yours. You can introduce yourself and if anybody <laughs> has questions, you all can just step on in and ask. Yeah, yeah. So I've been working with Tanya now for a couple months now. It's been great. Uh, there's been a lot of great progression in regards to what she's doing in her digital footprint. Um, as of right now, um, I'm sure everyone knows that kind of the world is shifting. Uh, it all started with COVID, right? So, and it started earlier than that, but I think people woke up to it when COVID came around. Um, so people had to figure out a way to, you know, get their voice out and not only that, generate leads, uh, create that presence without having to actually be in the room, right? So um, it kind of comes down and boils down to, you know, how far you're trying to take what you're doing because at the end of the day, um, social media, um, ads, any form of lead gen or conversion is so important to your business. It's, it's to me, it's number one, right? And I feel like it got kind of forgotten and lost in the crowd uh, throughout the years. And I think now people are seeing like, you know, it's, it's competitive out there. And the most important thing is you being able to get your message and your call to actions out and being able to convert, you know, people of interest that are interested in what you're doing into a position of wanting to be a part of your business or wanting to contribute or, you know, their conversion, right? So, but yeah, so, you know, it's it's been a pleasure and, and thank you, Tanya, for inviting me. Um, and realistically, if there's any questions you guys do have, I could probably ramble for an hour. I don't know how much time Tanya has, <laughs> but, um, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, if there's any questions, you know what I mean, um, in regards to marketing and possibly, you know, ways to stay within your budget and be able to push your business and still, you know, have that competitive edge. And not only that, that branding alignment to your actual mission and tone. Right. So, yeah. Is there any questions? Anyone have anything there? Well, oh, go ahead, Stacey. Oh, well, I, I, I don't have a AC. question, but I do have a, I, I, I need to follow up with you, Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. I know, I know life happens. And at the same time, at the end of the day, I'm here and ready whenever. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. But I, I wanted to say for the benefit of the group that, yeah. you know, I am social media adverse. I mean, yeah. um, some of them, some of you who may know me more on a personal note that I'm very, I'm shy. I'm like I just don't enjoy the similar to Tanya. I don't, I don't, I don't care about social media, but I do understand the importance of it. Yeah. But how it will relate to your note business and your note goals is that that's how you develop community. 
yes. a, a month because you're buying notes across or you can buy notes across the continent you having that social media presence is important especially on instagram because i hear yeah. so much about other note investors getting deals finding community finding yes. connections on facebook and social and instagram and so if you're anything like me who has very little social media establishing that presence is important and so uh connecting with someone like terrence to help you develop your online presence is you know it's is is critical in, in you especially if you're trying to really grow um, yeah. in this industry. So I, I just wanted to say that. Yeah, of course. And, and honestly, a lot of people shy away from it because they feel like it may cost too much to be able to market themselves or whatever it is. There's honestly strategic ways. If you were to hire someone who knew what they were doing, um, that they would build a plan around your goals and your budget. Right. Um, and then we, you would be able to put yourself in a position um, a lot further, like you're saying, to start building your community, start building your awareness. And not only that, the end goal of any business is conversions at the end of the day. Um, but you also have to put it into perspective, right? I shared this with Tanya and Stacey. Um, it's 2022, right? Everyone nowadays, if they hear about your business, if they hear about an opportunity you may have presented to them, whatever is going on, as soon as they get home, they're looking on Google or they're looking on social media. And, and, you know, that's where our world's kind of gone. And so that digital footprint is like your digital, um, what can I say, business card. It's like comparable to that, right? Um, if people go and visit where your hub is, where you're saying you're presenting your value, what you do in your story and all of these things, and it doesn't align with the person they met, you know, they, they may not take those steps forward in being able to work with you or, you know, grow that relationship with you, right? So some people don't realize how important that is. We all meet someone for the first time. You have a first impression of someone, whether it's you're feeling their energy, what they're wearing, whatever's going on, but something drew you to that person. And then if you found out that person wasn't following through or wasn't aligned with everything else, it would throw you off. And then you, you maybe your judgment wouldn't be the exact same. So it's no different in the marketing world, digital world. You know, people are going to align from face value to what they see online with what kind of value they think you can bring to their business. Right. So. I wanted to say um, that's so true. One, that uh, when I was speaking at Maria and I just actually I wasn't even speaking, I just made a comment. And then I was passing out some business cards and someone said, oh, no, 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 that's okay. I don't need your card. I found you right here. And yeah. the first thing they did was they showed me my website and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's when I was like, okay, now if they looked at anything else that I did, they're not going to see anything. They'll see pictures of my garden, but it doesn't show, you know, that I'm note investing or that I made this my business. So yes. with that said, I have a couple of questions for people who aren't looking to do this like as a business maybe there's just a person who just wants one or two uh notes in there in their portfolio they're not looking to build a big empire of real estate they're looking just to be a quiet you know real estate investor but maybe start using other people's money or do that how do you differentiate that from someone who is like working their business and building a business in real estate investing yeah so for for that i feel like this is my perception of it and kind of how i perceive it so Basically, at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, this is how I live my life. This is like my, my book. <laughs> no matter what you're doing, you are a business. You're a walking business in everything that you do, right? So, um, you know, someone who has a service business or someone who wants to just dabble in here and there and it's their side business or what's going on, you know, you would be able to allocate specific strategies that would allow you to still be seen, still show that congruency and alignment in what your vision and what you're, what you're trying to say out, right? Because at the end of the day, people who are viewing you and people who you want to grow in your community, they have to understand what you're even trying to do. And they have to understand where you're trying to go with it, right? Like how you're trying to build that relationship with them and what value they're going to feel they're getting from that relationship. So if you're trying to just get out and meet people and be on socials, 
that's very effective. But at the same time, you need to post about what you're doing and you need to post about your process and you need to show people somewhat of your story. And if you want to hide behind the camera, that's fine too, because there's people who honestly will just post that they're here, that they went and did this. That, that catalog of history that you're accumulating every day or every week on your socials or your website or whatever's going on, wherever you're hubbing this information, is going to show face when that person goes and does their due diligence on you, right? So whether that's you, you know, sharing your knowledge on node investing, it's just educating the people who are following you, or you and going and engaging with other accounts that are aligned with what you're looking to do, that's still going to open up light years ahead, opposed to trying to just do it all at face value, right? Because it's limitless on the internet. You can take it anywhere, right? Um, there's, yeah, so I feel like no matter what way you're trying to go, if it's a main business or a side business, I feel like you have to start perceiving yourself as that you are a business. The person's making a relationship with you. You're, you're a business. You have to treat it that way. You have to present yourself that way. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really important, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I also um, look at it from a perspective of, because I'm kind of, you know, even though I'm full-time uh, investor, um, growing in the note business, I'm taking it one step at a time, right? Yes. And so from a perspective of, of um, social media, like I don't want to allocate a, 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 a large lump sum of money, but mm -hmm. I do want to establish a small presence out there. And if nothing but to say, okay, in two or three or five years, if I decide to grow my business into a something more elaborate, I can have a historical record of, hey, I've been doing this for XYZ number of years. And you know, that that kind of breadcrumb trail of this has been my evolution. So that's kind of how I look at, you know, establishing my social media presence, even though I'm still apprehensive about it. <laughs> that is very important to do. Yeah. It, it, it's all one step at a time. You don't have to jump in head first, honestly. Um, and you can start building up and seeing what works for you. You can utilize social media to see what's going on in the market, to see what your peers are doing, right? To educate yourself as well. Um, and then to share that. So I feel like there's different pathways you can go about it, but building your community starts online. It's it, it, The world has just changed so much. Um, for you to reach a hundred people in one day, just think how long that would take you, right? You could do that with one social post. It, it, it's crazy, right? Um, so I feel like, you know, uh, you kind of got to start taking those steps, but you don't have to jump in head first, right? So... So, so Terrence, you, you also consult on like branding, like, yes. Okay. Yes. Good to know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do all uh, digital brand alignment, everything from your collateral to your actual brand itself, to your tones, to your messages, to your websites, anything that you're looking for, I can align it all. Um, and speaking of brand, right. It's, it's, it's another very important piece. Um, that a lot of people don't take as serious as maybe they should um, in, in being able to build a certain brand. If you are doing something, you know what I mean? Like Nike and all of these things, you want to do something that's at least somewhat memorable. You creating a brand and sticking to it and sharing that with people and them can seeing it, seeing it consistently. Oh my gosh, it does wonders for you, right? Because not only people see the transparency of what you're doing, but they start to believe you, Right. Um, and, and and when they start to believe you, it opens up different doors for you to build your community, build your network, and build your opportunities in front of you, right? So, so, so you try to. So, if I'm hearing correctly, um, you're you're like doing the whole soup to nuts thing, okay? So let's work on your brand so that it so that people get the idea of who you are. Then let's tie in your social. Then let's tie in your mark. Let's just do it all. So that it's consistent across the board. If they're looking at you on Facebook or Instagram or um, wherever, your website or whatever, it all just kind of flows. Is, is that what I'm hearing? It, it's, it's like an electronic circuit. It's like a circuit. It's Once you break the circuit, there might be an issue. It's just got to be all the way through, all the way around. So there's there's if you're on a platform, it has to align 
with your Instagram. Your Instagram has to align with your LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn has to align with your website. But don't get that confused. Um, there is a different tone and a different audience on certain platforms depending on what you're trying to target and what your oh. call to actions are, right? So you are going to approach LinkedIn a little bit different than you are going to approach um, Instagram. You are going to approach Facebook a little bit different than you're going to approach TikTok. Like it, it's all a little bit different, but then at the same time, you can put your efforts where they belong. So if you're if you're targeting a younger demographic, you're going to target specific things like TikTok and such, right? If you're right. targeting an older demographic, people who take the time to read things, people who don't have an attention span of two minutes or two seconds, right? You're going to focus on Facebook. You're going to focus right. on specific things that are going to allow you to align with your target audience, right? But that's all in the strategy, right? When you go from your brand to your strategy, to where you, you know what I mean, to your conversions, like it's all full, full force, right? So, all right. So, so now here's my last question. So, cause I'm thinking as you're talking, yeah. so, so we do everything that you just said. So now yeah. here's, here's the question. So yeah. like I've been on Facebook, I've, I, I don't post a lot on Instagram. I actually use Facebook um, to minister. Like I'm a, I'm a healing, healing rooms minister. Oh, like nice. Part-time. So I okay. do that like once a month, but I post stuff that that's in the, you know, stuff about God and, and stuff like that, that turns yeah. some people off. So, so now that's been out there for years. Like I use Facebook to just speak into people's lives. Okay. Yeah. So now let's say I want to take my business and I want to start incorporating all that into it. How does that past history does that like create an, uh, a problem for me or do I, or do you kind of like, okay, this is what you were doing now let's kind of segment. I mean, is there, do you well, ever find where that past history then creates a problem for you when you're trying to? Yes. To, okay. <laughs> for sure. Um, so it, it all depends on what our goals are and that would be discussed prior to any movement, right? But okay. the thing is, if you have, you know, monster trucks all over your page, right? And then all of a sudden you're getting into note investing or real estate or whatever is going on, these things don't really align and they kind of have two different target audiences. But not to say that there isn't a way that you could spin that off. But Tanya, for example, she, she had cats and uh, she had plants all over her pages, right? And that was fine, but we decided, okay, like this is the route we're going. This is our actual goals here. And I went and we cleared everything off and we started from scratch, right? So at the same time, lots of people think that's a negative. It's it's really not, right? It's, it's a digital platform. You can refresh and restart over and over and over again. People are gonna forget by the next week. <laughs> so new canvas, new painting. New painting. And and I yes. haven't started talking about investing yet. So yeah. I see you first. We get the strategy together. We kind of break from the yes. past. And then people start hearing me talking about the new thing. And then they just kind of forget about the old thing. This but not thing. to say that you throw your values out the window. Because right. if you're preaching something that's you know positive and growth and motivational, you know there's different pillars that we would utilize in being able to market you. Because at the end of the day, if it's a service business like Node Investing, they got to right. know there's a person behind the brand. So you would be able to motivate people in different ways and still utilize your faith. So utilize your vision. And utilize what you're doing because that still will attract that same crowd um, and give poise value for them, right? Outstanding. Thank yeah. you. I yeah, appreciate sure. the explanation and I appreciate you being here. Of course. Thanks. <laughs> so Jim and I are on the same wavelength, it seems like tonight. He he jumped in before I could get off mute <laughs> because I really kind of wanted to get an idea of the suite, I guess, of services that you offer. So I, I am like Stacy, and I actually have an aversion to social media. I have yeah. no presence. And it's amazing that I made it this long without having any presence. I, I'm a real yeah. estate agent. I have a real estate agent Facebook page that has no pictures on it. You must I mean, be really I, good at what you do. Right. So I'm, I'm just, I really have no presence and I like it that way, Yeah. <laughs> but I also know that it, um, it is crippling me and being able to do all the level of business I would like to do. So I'm kind of starting from scratch with, with mm -hmm. my, you know, I don't have a whole history that you got to get rid of, yes. but 
I, I am one of those kind of jump all in type people. Like, so I'm about to get my entity set up and the branding, what James was talking about, the branding. So yes. from what I name my entity to, you know, the website, everything, yes. I want to kind of make sure from start, I don't want to have to go back and redo. I mean, I'm, I may have to make adjustments as I grow, yes. but I want to start with, you know, an, an end goal in mind about what I want my branding to look like. So are you, how, how involved do we get? Like when I, for my website, I don't have a website. I don't have my Facebook page. I don't have any of that. Do you provide though that level of service? And I already know, I, I don't really want to do the posting. I want somebody to do posting for me. Like I, how much, how many services, you know, how deep do you get with this? Do you just tell me what to do? What can you do it for me? You no, know, um, honestly for me, my, my vision, since when I started doing what I was doing, when I finished school, um, is that I, I wanted to become a nonstop, one-stop shop. So for me, is that I go through that entire journey with you and I try to educate you along the way as well. Um, but I execute these things for my clients, right? That's the most important thing, time, right? I'm, I'm me working with Tanya, you know what I mean? My job is to save her time and get to where she has in her mind um, so we're both aligned. So she, she goes and she looks and it's where she wants it to be. It's what she wants it to say, the copywriting, the, the branding, the content brands, the blog, whatever she, she decides she needs me to do when it comes to her image or engagement or her growth, I go and do it. We meet consistently. Um, you know, I see Tanya all the time. I feel like I know her but personally. It's been a while now. <laughs> and it's been a great experience, but I get very involved. Um, and I'm, I stay very transparent because for me, it's like, I don't want to be seen as an outsider when I have a client. I want to feel like I'm involved in their business. And for me, that allows me to take it to that next level because I want it to do well. My goal is ROI. My goal is to see whether the ROI is cash flow or the ROI is engagement. So the ROI, there needs to be results somewhere eventually for what we're doing together. You know what I mean? And that's me seeing her thrive and grow and people coming back to her and seeing her branding and being like, this is great. And then wanting to get involved in her business or her allowing it to take it to that next level. You know, it's all a work in progress, but for me, it's very important to be involved. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I want you to do the part you're good at <laughs> and that, and this is definitely not the part I'm good at. <laughs> well, that that's what it is. Like, I feel like in life, you know what I mean? A lot of people are scared to invest in someone that's good at what they do when they don't want to do it because they feel like, Oh, it's like, it, it's money. It's cash flow. It's a transaction. You know what I mean? And a lot of people feel like mm, maybe I won't get that back, but I'm telling you right now, the easiest thing to do in life is to find someone who's good at what they do, allow them to do it and learn from them. Right. That's just the best way to do it. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So I, I think Christopher has a question. Christopher has his uh, hand raised. I do. Thank you. Um, hey, Terrence, I just, hey. uh, I have to hop off in a couple minutes. So I yeah. just wanted to be able to get your um your con your your uh, contact information if possible. I do have, and we can go in the detail, but I certainly like to talk to you in in depth. But I have um, I have like a parent company set up. Um, okay. I have uh, an LLC. I have a um, uh, DBA that's actually um, is linked to the carrot site that I have, and blah blah blah. And I just, just did an IG account as well, which. I don't even, I'm not, nothing's posted in there or, or whatever. So it's all, it's, it's a blank slate, but I just started putting some things in place. But um, again, I just like to, to, to do a deep dive with you and see, um, you know, how you can, you know, help with that. And, you know, other things that I have in place, are they suitable? Is it, is, is it going to work or not, or whatever the case may be. So um I see you just, did you just put that into the? Yeah, yeah. And so it's info at guruomarketinginc.com. All right, And cool. honestly, Christopher, we can go through your plan, um, whether or not that's actively me being involved in what you're doing, or we set up something where I'm assisting you in regards to knowledge portion or what's going on, but 100%, right? Excellent. I'll, um, I'll send you an email um, either tonight or tomorrow, and then okay. hopefully we can get something on the books. Amazing. Sounds great. All right, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And everyone have a blessed evening.
You, you take this first. Christopher. Uh, blessing. Ash, can we get your last name? Yeah, it's Blake. Thank you. So, so Terrence, I have a I have a question that may be helpful to other people in the in the uh, meeting here in the group. Um, so, and this was kind of touched upon uh, with Nicole and and Jim. Um, but how do you balance? Like, if you have multiple, um, you have a day job, a nine to five, and then you're doing your note business, and then you may have your ministry. Um, how would you go about helping someone balance that social media presence? and still be authentic to themselves, right? But maybe like I, you and I had this conversation, maybe not wanting to have your nine to five know about your note business, you know, because there could be some overlap there, right, Tanya? People find <laughs> before it's time. <laughs> like, like you want to keep some, and that's the biggest thing about social media is like, it's yeah. lack of privacy is it can be yeah. transparent or not as much as you want but you want to be authentic you want you know you want to present your authentic self but yeah. how do you balance that correctly you know especially working a nine to five and having your part-time gig and yeah yeah um well honestly it's being prepared that's the biggest thing is preparing yourself whether it's content calendars whether it's you planning that entire week prior. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and that preparation allows you to still give that quality, that tone or whatever's going on, and then to pass it off even to someone to finish the job for you. But you being able to distance yourself from, you know, that every day having to push your notes and doing what's going on, it all comes down to preparation. You can prepare for the entire week on, a, on the weekend or the Monday or whatever is going on or the month. Um, I sometimes, you know what I mean, we'll sit there and think of strategy for someone like Tanya, you know, for the entire month. And we have ideas and then we'll meet and then we'll discuss, okay, so this week, let's have some ideas in regards to posts and we'll fill out a calendar. And then Tanya will go in there and she'll put all her organic ideas and then I'll go in and finish the job for her, right? And then she goes and carries on with what she's doing. Um, but ba the balance is always kind of the hard part because you know, you, you want to put the energy here and you want to put the energy here and you feel if you don't put energy here, you're not going to be successful, but that's not true. It's quality over quantity. Um, just have a plan, take the time to plan and you will get there, right? Um, you're an accumulation of what you do every day. And I, I strongly believe that, but you can do your entire week in a day. <laughs> you really can, right? It is possible. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I have a spinoff on that question, Terrence. What if you have multiple personas or more than one persona? So I have another business. Yeah. Um, I'm a yoga teacher and I have a yoga business around that. And I have clientele around that. I also have my wholesaling business. Okay. And, you know, I'm one of those quiet in the background investors that's just not really trying to show the world yeah. um, what I'm doing. I'm just doing it, but I do want to network. Um, so I'm not speaking to my investments in the yoga business and vice versa. Um, I have friends who are real estate agents who are yogis and they're like, I'm the yogi realtor. Um, and that's, awesome. that's not really what I'm, I'd like to do. Um, but yeah. how would someone like me manage, uh, having more than one persona out there on, um, social media? Yeah. So um, there's lots of tools out there for you to manage multiple accounts at one time. You know, you guys are probably wondering, how the hell does he do it? Um, there's programs out there where I can manage multiple accounts at the same time um, and have them all in separation. Uh, so um, like Tanya uses later, right? Um, there's different things like HubSpot and different platforms where you can have it all organized, content calendars, have all your content and being able to log into those accounts, engage with that audience or have automations to engage with those audiences as well. Um, but keeping it separate, honestly, um, is a really good thing to do unless, unless you're well known for the other thing you're doing, because it's not such a bad thing, honestly, to cross promote if you already have an audience and people already trust you. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, online, you're trying to gain people's trust through content, through verbiage, through imagery, through all of these things that you're doing. 
And using that as a stepping stone necessarily isn't a bad thing to cross promote because you'd be amazed how many people appreciate people who are multifaceted or multi-talented at what they're doing. So in some senses, maybe an option for you for a hub for what you're doing, still have your separate pages, but maybe you need an influencer page. Maybe that's what you are and you don't know it yet. You know what I mean? Um, and influencer, I mean, like, it doesn't have to be face value. It could be something as simple as a page that educates people and gives people harmony and does specific things and that you're interested in that people will support and you will gain a following from that as well, especially if you're engaging with accounts. And I always say, you know, like, why limit yourself? Right. Don't be scared right. for people to know how talented you are. You're talented at multiple things. Let people yeah. know you're a real person. <laughs> you have a good point. And I think I'll reach out to you to talk about it more because, sure. you know, part of what I do is um, a byproduct of what I believe in yes. at the end of the day. Yes, I want to profit and build wealth for my family, but I also believe that. Um, you know, you can use your gifts, your way of being in the world to help people um, yes. and also to um, to gain wealth. And I think that there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that yeah. at the end of the day, um, that might be why we're here. One of the reasons anyway, um, to give your gifts freely and that um, mm -hmm. for me, it's just being with people in a particular way, seeing what they need. And that's what I do in my yoga space. And when I look at investing, I'm not, yes, I, you know, I feel like it's a way for my family to gain wealth, but I also look at from the perspective of, you know, how can, how can I help solve this person's problem? What problem mm -hmm. do they have? Um, there's a problem there, clearly. How can I help? Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not there to take or to pray or anything like that or take advantage. Um, and so if there's a way to parlay just, you know, my way of showing up into that and, you know, not call myself the yogi note investor because <laughs> I just, I, yeah, I just, you know, I just, that's not what I want to call myself, but, um, but that is who I am. So if there's a way to convey that. Um, yeah. Uh, because I do have a, another persona out there that people search for and they see and that they know it's been out there for a long time. Yeah. Um, and so now I have this new persona or this other persona that's out there as an investor. And, and those people don't really know about the, the other persona. Yeah. Um, how can I leverage both or all of me um, without, you know, obliterating one or forsaking one for the other or you know saying I don't do that anymore because I do yeah um well you 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 would be amazed like I said how people would appreciate being able to see someone who is multifaceted but not only that that you do you're a real person and you have these morals and you have these interests and you have these hobbies because at the end of the day, social media is people watching people. <laughs> like we're just interested in what's going on or what we can learn or what are they doing over here? Like it's, it's, it's one of those things. So on your page, I feel like the nuance of only having, you know, one page directed at one thing. And this is one thing me and Tanya are always working on was like, Tanya, show people you were at this event and you're with your team and you're just having a good time. Like people want to see that right? Mm -hmm. People resonate and relate to those things. And those things are really important for someone to gain, for you to gain people's trust. Don't think it's going to ruin what you have going on because those people who are into yoga, they, they might be into investing as well, but they just don't know where to look or they're not uh, aligned with those channels. You mm -hmm. might be their answer. And it doesn't mean that it has to be your only audience because there are people who invest that do need to find peace, that do need to find themselves, that do need to do specific things. Right. So I wouldn't overcomplicate it and you don't know until you try. Mm. Um, and at the same time, don't think people are so harsh because people want to be entertained. And that's what it really comes down to. And their attention spans are super short, but if you're pushing your note investing or what you're investing all week and you're educating people, but then you say, calm down, relax. <laughs> this is what we're doing on the weekend, guys. This is oh, like, they people like that stuff so mm -hmm. okay. it's just a way to do it you just have to develop a little strategy uh, a scheduling all that kind of stuff so 
Okay, I appreciate that. Of course. Thank you, Terrence. Of course. Was there any more questions? <laughs> Terrence, I just wanted to say that Tanya is following your advice because yes. I was at an event with her and she, yeah. Uh, I was at the Maria event with her last Thursday, I believe. Was it Tanya or two weeks ago? And she was it like, was. I'm, old, I'm not uh, on social media enough. I need to post my food. And, you know, <laughs> I talked about you, Terrence. I yes. talked about you bad. Yes. She's doing it. She's yes. doing it. Yes. Yes. You have to, you have to ease the tension in the room. You know what I mean? People don't want to be bombarded with your call to actions and your and your business. They want to support you, but they want to support you, right? That's the end goal because those people will stay around the longest and those are the people that will convert into regards to your business or your service. They will trust you. So I hear you saying you want to come across as a real person, not just somebody exactly. trying to take my money from me. Exactly. And you can read it from a mile away. People... People don't want to feel like they're being pushed into things. People, they, you know, it's as quick as for them to just click unfollow. Like that's how fast people can just disappear. But at the same time, you know, people want to be able to feel that they can resonate and relate to you in some sense. You'd be surprised, like I said, how many people relate to yoga, relate to something as simple as Tanya posting, oh, I'm eating this, I'm feeling great today, I don't know. Someone's going to sit there and be like, that looks good, like Tanya's having a good time, like, and she has this note business, she's killing it, I, I like following Tanya. <laughs> it is yeah. truly a balancing act, though. Yes. Yes. And and I haven't mastered that under any circumstance. And, You're doing and great though. Oh, thank you. I appreciate sure. that. Because that's what Terrence tells me to do. He's like, oh, take a picture of your bees. I'm like, no, I'll see my bees. I care about that. <laughs> take a picture. I'm outside cutting my grass. Take a picture. Yeah. I don't care. But he's like, yeah. no, you're a real person. People do business with people, with not with people. posts. And that's that's what what but you have to get getting. that perfect picture of the bee flying in midair and the wings <laughs> flapping and the, uh, yeah, you know, that pe perfect oh, national yeah. geographic picture. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'd love to see the bees in the gardens. The yeah, grass cutting the grass cutting's a little bit too real. <laughs> right. but, yeah. <laughs> people like real people. At the end of the day, it's all about relating to people. And you can educate people and funnel people to your business. But at the same time, you're going to gain that longevity of like trust and people actually trying to reach out to you for, you know, like, oh, Tony, I see you doing this. But hey, that note investing, like, you know, I really like that last post. Like, you'd be surprised. People are always watching. Even if you get two likes, honest to God, people are watching. And that's actually true because I wasn't doing too much. But as soon as I put something out on Facebook saying that I was doing, you know, the training and so forth, my family started because I didn't tell my family I'm doing because, you know, family. Yeah. I don't, I'm yeah. A, I don't invest with all of them. And so they started calling me and saying, you know, oh, what's this about? What's that about? Yeah. And then I had one friend reach out and she said, Tanya, I joined because you never post anything. So I wanted to listen to your thing because I knew if you posted it, it was serious. Yes. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah. It, it's a, I, that balancing act is a little bit difficult for me putting the and my issue too was putting my face out there and making yourself vulnerable yeah. and that's what I really didn't like because there's so many trolls out there so many people hitting you up and saying yeah. negative things but I haven't experienced and not much of that at all but um that was my concern it's just you just you put yourself out there you put your business out there you you all of a sudden become vulnerable and, you, and people start taking shots at you. And maybe that's on my way up the ladder. But even still, I don't, you know, you don't want that. Yeah. And, and honestly, you know, you're always, there's always going to be a little ricochet here and there because some people, honestly, for whatever reason, God bless their souls. That's just where, what they do with their day to day. But, you know, in real life too, you can walk into a room and someone just has that energy and doesn't resonate with anyone in the room. And that's what happens sometimes. But the beautiful thing about social media if set up correctly, you can filter everything. You can block specific things. You're in control. It's, it's your world. That channel is your world. Right. That's what Yolanda said. Block them. <laughs> there you go. Block them. Block them. Trust me, I, I have people, my block game is serious. On my Facebook. <laughs> Just because of that whole negativity 
and not having anything positive to say. So they are not on my Facebook page. There you go. I right, also right. really, um, I'm very careful. And I'm and just as a suggestion, um, being new, I, I, don't, I only do Facebook and I don't even look at it that often just to see what my friends are doing. But when yeah. people ask to be uh, my friend on Facebook, I literally, if I don't know them, then I, you know, I don't care who you know that might know me. I don't know you. So I don't let you in on my Facebook page. <laughs> That's just what I do. And if it's something I do know, I will go and look at their history of posts. Like there's a way you can look at their history of posts. And if I don't like what they're posting, then no, I don't, I don't allow you to join my Facebook page. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not media friendly, social media friendly either. I'm not <laughs> Wanted to put my stuff out there. My own business, my business is not even out there, but I'm very cautious about who I let in my space. And I understand exactly what you and Stacey are saying because I'm the same way. And I'm talking about my space. <laughs> my so, space. so Yolanda, I, I'm right with you. Like, if okay. I don't know, why do you want to know me? Like, if I don't know you, why do you want to know me? Exactly. Like, so <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm a people person. I'll talk to you yes. in the elevator. I'll go out of my way to say hi, you know, make a crack a funny joke or something like that. But, but there's a, there's a, there's a level where it's like, okay, like, yeah, I don't need you. I don't, if I don't, I don't know want who you. you are, I don't need you yeah. like chiming in and blowing yeah. up my page and everything else. My daughter will tell you in a minute, I, I'm the same way I can talk to, I can turn around and talk to a stranger in the grocery store. I can talk to a stranger at the, the gas pump. I can just, you know, just, just say hello. You know, I'm, I'm not the type of person that says hello. When you're walking in my path, and I'm walking in yours. Hello, good morning, good evening, whatever. Amen. I will talk to you, speak to you. I mean, I just think that's a, a godly thing to do in my book, but not everybody feels that way. But my daughter goes, you can sit here and talk to all these people on the street, but you don't want anybody on your social media. Because <laughs> the people you see on the street, you see them for a minute or two and then they're gone and you're gone. Done. Yeah, and they're not like following you around and yapping exactly. at you and all like <laughs> yes. that. Like you, like, yes. like wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't ask you to like follow me around. Yeah, I just said hi. That's hi. <laughs> and my hi is hopefully to um, if you're having a bad day or right. you're by yourself, and I might be the first person you encounter. So I'm gonna say good morning, hello, and that's you know just so you know you're not in this world by yourself. So to speak. amen. But you know just. You know, that kind of can I say, how do you because I felt the same way. And then when I started working with Terrence and he started doing this follow unfollow thing. Right. Yeah. And so he started following people. He started targeted marketing and all, all this stuff and people who were interested in notes, people who were interested in real estate, people who were in investing. Yeah. And then I saw my numbers on Facebook start going up and I was like, mm -mm, I don't know these people. <laughs> people following me why is he doing all of this it made me so nervous yeah. but then mm -hmm. did, I did start seeing you know some relationships being built mm -hmm. some stuff is just junk some is like you know a VA yeah. you would say hey you need a VA and yeah. then a couple of other things but other things are hey I see you're in the note space though, or do you have any deals or do you have any of this so I see it so Terrence how do you balance that that I don't want everybody following me, but yet I've got, you say, as a person, I'm a business and I need to market myself. Yeah. But you know, how with how Yolanda and James and I felt, how do you balance that? I'm used to it now. Yeah. So. You hire Terrence. Yeah. You well, hire Terrence I do all the dirty work, work, right? <laughs> but so even in, this, in, the, in that, you still have those relationships that you want to build. And I'm at the point now where I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm convinced that whoever I need to see come through on my social is who I need to see. I don't need to be on there all the time no. looking to see who is doing the relationships and who's built. Whoever pops up, it may be, hey, do you have any of this? Or, hey, are you looking for any notes? I got one of those a couple of weeks ago that yeah. said, do you buy in this area? Do you buy this? We have some tapes. And I was like, okay, send them my way. And that was nice, but I knew that I would see it, but I'm not on there constantly because it's, it's exhausting if you're on there. Yes, 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 it is. I don't know how people do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, um, like with you, you know, having a little bit of strategy and actually targeting, knowing where to find your target audience is just so important. Once you kind of know where to find them, um, in, in some sense, you know, taking that step forward and kind of letting that guard down, knowing that these people have similar interests to you 
And not only that, like that's just building your network. It's no different than walking into a trade show and shaking everyone's hand and grabbing their business card and putting them in your phone, right? Uh, but at the same time, I understand where you're coming from, Yolandi, like in regards to you don't want these people knowing everything that's going on or following you around or whatever is going on. Um, but there's specific strategies to kind of, you know, filter that and tighten that 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 process up so that, you know, you are reaching out to that one guy who has been looking for an opportunity to invest or that real estate agent who's looking for someone to partner with. Or do you know what I mean? Those people are out there and there comes an opportunity cost that a lot of things, you know, we do do in this life, I feel, right? But at the same time, you can do it in steps and you can do it in a way that you feel comfortable and you're able to actually connect with people who are in your industry, similar interests, and possibly, you know, adore a partnership for you, right? So can I ask you a quick question? Of so course. I am on Facebook. Okay. That's the only social, I don't have TikTok, I don't have Instagram, I, none um, tweets, I look at every other people's, but I'm not on it. <laughs> Yeah, so I just look it up, and mainly um, Barack Obama, you know, the, the political stuff, CNN, I'm a junkie person. So with that being said, if I um, go on LinkedIn and something separate from my Facebook, which is purely social, mm -hmm. a way to like uh, differentiate between my actual social page versus my Facebook page, and then do like a LinkedIn business page. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. LinkedIn, LinkedIn's very, very powerful. And I'm telling you, you guys, utilize it before they change the algorithm. Utilize it before they get you to pay for everything. I'm telling you, because that's what happened with Instagram. And that's what's happening with Facebook as well. You know, for specific reach and being able to, you know, push yourself really out there, they got you paying for, you know, ads or specific things to be able to utilize different tools. LinkedIn right now for B2B and even B2C, just depending on where you're trying to target is amazing. There's young professionals, older professionals. You can get Sales Navigator if you'd like. You can create leads lists on Sales Navigator of people specifically, you know, their industry, their a uh, job title, how long they've been doing it for, their activity on LinkedIn. Like you can filter to a T, find those people, create those lists and build those relationships, even if it's one by one, you know what I mean? Because it's going to do, it's going to do, you know, numbers for you and it's going to get you maybe closer to where you're trying to go. Right. Thank but LinkedIn's an amazing tool. Definitely be on LinkedIn and, and connect with, you know, other peers in your industry. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Terrence, do you also manage bots and fake accounts? Um, you know, folks who particularly on Instagram who will create fake accounts, um, business accounts uh, so that your friends think it's you or your followers think it's you. Do you manage that or how do you recommend managing that kind of thing? Sorry, like when you say bot accounts, do you mean like accounts that are like, like, what do you mean by that? Sorry, I'm just not following. Well, uh, maybe it's not a bot account, but, you know, I'll notice I have a new follower and it's someone who's got like maybe 10 posts of these oh. this person that's, you know, it's not a real person yes. or it's a fake person. Yes, yes. Do you so, manage that? that yes, 100%, 100%. So basically within the strategy, um, any, any ricochet or anything that's going on, as you move forward, you build your growth and then you filter and you clean. You build your growth and then you filter and you clean. It's it's a full process in regards to that. But those, those accounts as well, typically you're not following them. You can block them if you would like. Do you know right. what I mean? But at yeah. the end of the day, unfortunately, the one thing about the internet is that a lot of people have utilized it in the wrong way. Um, and that's kind of, you know, that's kind of the world I feel. I feel like people always ruin a great thing sometimes. <laughs> yeah. They find a way to ruin a great thing, but there are strategies to protect yourself against that. And okay. eventually, honestly, the more you get out there, the more you become numb to it and you don't even acknowledge it anymore. Like Tanya, when we first started, she would message me in the week and she'd be like, who's this person messaging me asking me <laughs> this? And I'm right. <laughs> And, you know, and that filters out as we go. And, you know, there's just a strategy with it. Um, but yes, you know, that is managed as well. And there's ways to, if, if it bothers you or if it's something that's, you know, becoming antagonizing, 100% that can be 
cleaned up for sure. Okay. Yeah. I just asked because um, it seems like, you know, if you're posting about things regarding investing in money, that you become a target for folks who yes. might want to market you for Bitcoin or whatever. And then they'll go and they'll pilfer your followers and then mm -hmm. make your followers think that they are you requesting to follow them or, or maybe in their inbox or something like that. So just yeah. wondered if that was something you manage. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And honestly, another thing as well that I'll give you guys advice, never click a link from anyone on the internet. If they send you anything, it doesn't matter if it's an account or someone you know or family member, you say, text me that. You do not click that link <laughs> ever. I agree. Yes. Ever. Ever. Ever, never, never. Because people ever. are devious and you click yes. the next thing you know, you got all kind of stuff coming oh. in. Email on your phone. Oh my. And it, it's hard to get, it's so hard to get rid of. Yeah. Now, yeah. I can do a yeah. little plug. McAfee is great for, for filtering that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just any never kind click of, any email. kind of software package like that. Yeah. Even in your email, honestly, if you, yeah. even if you know the person, you ask that person, hey, did you send me a link? Like always, like because nowadays they've gotten so good at being able to get in your accounts with one click of a link. They're in your phone. Anything that's connected to that account, they're in. So at that point, you have your banking, you have your, you know, personal pictures, whatever is going on, your business accounts, you know, things you've invested into, whatever it is, so just never click a link, ever. Thank you for that. Yeah, unless you know the person sending it to you and you're expecting it, don't click it. Yeah, that's wise. That's wise. Yeah, I think Juanita has a question. Okay. So I do have a question, but I also wanted to say something with regard to um, blocking people. Okay. I tell people that my block game is serious. <laughs> and, and as far as like coworkers and not wanting people in your business, yeah, I usually find colleagues and I block them immediately. Mm -hmm. So they have no access to me personally. Yeah. But I have a question with regard to LinkedIn. So I am in a area of nursing now that I really like and okay. I would really and I know we're talking about business but do you also do like professional LinkedIn pages yes. because I just kind of want to get my page correct so that you know people see that that's what that's the area of nursing that I'm into now um I kind of you know just did LinkedIn as like a resume but I really want to make it correct yeah no, 100% definitely. And that's a, a very important point. Um, LinkedIn, yes, lots of people do use it for that exact reason. Hey, I did this job, I'm a qualified person. But you always have to go back to it, right? Why are people going to look at your LinkedIn page that don't know who you are? They're possibly looking for a service, they're looking for a colleague, they're looking for a peer, they're looking for education, whatever they're looking for. So you still run it as a business page because at the end of the day, some people don't have LinkedIn business pages. They just use their LinkedIn page, okay. right? So you can still brand it. You can still share, you know, your business or whatever's going on on your main LinkedIn, inviting people, colleagues and peers into that. But 100%, I do do that. And I do recommend branding your LinkedIn for sure. Okay. All righty. Um, thank you. For sure. All right. Any other questions? That was fun. I could do this all day. Hey, <laughs> we're coming up on our hour. Terrence, I owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you so much. And, and Terrence, you. you're very good at what you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, and I like your animation. And don't take that the wrong way. But you, you come across as like you live what you preach, what yes. you believe. And, uh, and that's refreshing. It doesn't feel like a sell job. It feels like this is a real person. Yes. Perhaps I'd like to get to know this person better. Yeah. So you do I that really well. That, James, thank you. <laughs> awesome. And he's great to work with. He knows his stuff. <laughs> and I've referred him to multiple people. Thank and you. one thing I will say is that I've worked with different people in, in trying to delegate jobs so that I don't have to do everything. And it's very difficult in the note space because people understand real estate but they don't understand note investing. 
Yeah. And when I, I met with Terrence, I was like, here we go again. I got, to <laughs> out. got to tell him how it goes and tell him all of this. And Terrence picked it up so quickly. Yeah. And I was just so pleased. And then, you know, it was just minor tweaking of things. And so now when I refer him to other people who may be note investing, I'm like, oh, he knows it. Don't worry about it. And he's still <laughs> learning about it. So yeah. whatever industry you're in, he does his homework. Yes. And he knows what he's doing. And, and it's just refreshing because it does take that weight off of you and allows you to be able to do other things while he just manages the stuff I don't want to manage. I really appreciate that time. Terrence, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. thank you all for, for, for joining. And I appreciate your questions. Mm -hmm. Terrence has his information. It's info at guru marketing. Inc.com. Yes. Um, and you Any all know questions, can... anything, don't be scared. You know, whether it's just a conversation we're having, I'm down for it. Awesome. And if you all have any other questions or concerns. Yeah, Tanya, before we before we leave, can I go back to that LLC question um, that I sent you? <clears throat> yeah, so so I, I am a detail-oriented person, but I have like big, big vision. I see way down the road. And sometimes I have to like back myself up from the whole staircase and just think about the step I'm on. <laughs> So with this LLC thing, my, my number one goal right now is to get to the point where I can do my deal. And I definitely want to do that under LLC and not under my own name. So I guess I'm trying to figure out, is it, do I just get the LLC to hold the notes right now? Or do I need to get the LLC that I'm going to use to, like you said, advertise my business now? Which, what's the, which one is more important at this step? At this step, because you're ready to pull that note and get it in, I would get the one that holds the note. Okay. Because you're not pulling, you're, you say you want to make this your business, but you also say right now you're a blank slate. Right. right? So right. you have time to decide what that slate is going to be. Right. But as far as what you you want to do, as far as holding notes, I would just get that entity that wants to hold them first. And that makes sense. And, and the comment that you made, as small as it was, but I don't advertise the one with my notes, that gave me so much clarity because, okay, that's what the purpose is for that larger LLC, for, for being the face of my business. Exactly. But, the, so but the, L, the, the other LLCs is for actually transacting. The, the business and so Hold that on. that helps me so Hold i just on. wanted to kind of clarify that because i was struggling with that a little bit so thank oh, you yeah no worries no worries it's confusing and what nicole was talking about was that the way i have myself set up which is what we were supposed to talk about today is that i have an llc that i do business as but it doesn't hold any of my notes or any of my assets in it. I simply do business as the Pearl Harbor Group, which, by the way, if you'd like to leave a Google review, you can go to. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> she, no, 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 no. Stop. <laughs> don't kid about that. I so, like y'all yeah, you know like Tanya. She's giving you good value. Yeah. So <laughs> give her a review. My LinkedIn is Pearl Harbor. <laughs> I agree. I agree with James. You should ask for those when you do your trainings in these sessions. Ask for oh, I plan yeah. on it. I have it. I have it. Um, I have a, an email already queued up to send to the to the group after. But right. no, I would what she was saying was I do business as the Pearl Harbor group, but then I have another entity that I use that simply holds my assets. So I don't advertise it, I don't do anything about it. Nobody really knows about it unless you've JV'd with me. And then I do everything else as the Pearl Harbor Group, but I don't hold my assets in it. So she was asking which one should she give first, the one that holds her assets or the one that she does business as first. And that was the way I was told to set myself up. Don't hold assets in the business that you, you're currently advertising. But we could get more into that hopefully next month. And we could get more details from someone who specializes in it. So anything else, I do have something, the Note Expo is coming up. When I say coming up, it's actually in November. I'm going to put it in the, in the um, chat. They have early bird tickets available. I think it's like $400. If you bring a friend, is it $400 or $500? 400 something. And then if you bring a friend, it's like two something. But go there and they have the hotel reservations and everything. If you're interested in a Note Investing conference, um, I know I, this will be my first time going to Note Expo. I know Stacy went last year. Mm -hmm. um, any words on it, Stacy? Yeah. Um, so I think, um, James, you talked about any speed. I have not taken any of his classes, but I've been um, a student of his uh, for since I've started uh, researching note investing. Um, I love his 
um, weekly and his monthly um, state of the, you know, union or state of the industry kind of address. It kind of gives you an overview on what's happening in the industry and market trends and where he sees things going. Um, so I really um, enjoy that. Um, he is pretty expensive to sign up for his course. And I'm like, I could buy a note or two or three or four for that amount of money. Um, but I do like to attend the Note Expo um, because it gives you access to so many um, other industry leaders and other um, investors. Um, just again, it's a small community, um, but it's, you know, it actually, I was there last year and met someone who introduced me virtually to, to Tanya. So, um, you know, if, if it wasn't for me attending that, I, I wouldn't be here today. Um, so there's um, a lot of good information um, and um, be prepared to be sold on stuff that you may not need at this, at this point in your note um, investing, um, but it'll give you access to a lot of information um, that you can always come back to our smaller group and share and we can discuss and see how effective it will be for you as you move forward in, in this journey. So, um, yeah. Yeah, he has a lot of, like I said in the beginning, I've, I've taken two of his classes. Uh, that both, both of them are three-day classes. He's got a lot of great strategies. Mm -hmm. Like if you can pick up on the strategies I mean, that's how he's gotten to be the the leader in the industry that he is. Like he's so he's so good at like creative financing and all like that. Yeah. I'm sure the money that you would spend to be part of his community is well worth it if you have it. Yeah. But but yeah, like um I've seen in those classes they'll show some of the excerpts from the expo and all like that there's there's just a wealth of information yeah yeah and and the other thing too is that um he has his finger on the pulse of the industry that's the thing that i like and why i like to stay tapped into to uh to eddie speed is that he just always seems to know the the direction or um and and how to implement certain strategies and pivot in the industry when you need to pivot by executing those those uh, creative strategies, so. Awesome, thank you. So if you're interested, you can check it out and I will be in attendance. So hope to see you there. If not, it'll be next year too. Any other questions or concerns? I'm so grateful for you all coming out. Thank you so much, appreciate you. Of course, you know how to reach me, I'll put my dropping my email in the uh, chat. Anybody else want to network and drop their emails in there? You all can save the chat. Of course, there's the three little dots right there next to the happy face. Click that and save the chat and you can save everybody's information or the chat. So thank you. Thank you, Terrence. Appreciate you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you, Stacy and Jim, Juanita, Jessica, Nicole, Yolanda, Nelson, and Braxton. You all are awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm going to leave it, this open for a minute while you all can get the, the information in the chat. And thank you. Have a great evening. We'll see you next, next month, it'll be. Thank you, you all. Nice to meet everyone. We may have Thanks an interesting everyone. event, but we'll let you all know. Outstanding. Thank you. Super Thank you. blessings to you all. Thanks again, Terrence. You did it. You, you, you hit you hit the bull the the bullseye. You, guys. you awesome. knocked it out of the park. Maybe your baseball. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate you all. Nice meeting you all. Good meeting you all. Stay safe. Good evening.